Today, our destination is the early 90s, a pivotal era where consoles were evolving and among them emerged the Commodore CD32. Launched in 1993, this console was more than a gaming machine. It was a bold statement from Commodore, their first and only venture into the dedicated gaming console world. A first of its kind, fully 32-bit powerhouse, equipped with a Motorola 68EC020 processor, vibrant visuals courtesy of the advanced graphics architecture chipset, and a robust 2 megs of RAM. The CD32 wasn't just a console, it was a technological marvel, and the first fully 32-bit machine beating out contemporaries like the 3DO. But here's a twist. It was essentially a console-based Amiga 1200, sharing much of its hardware architecture with the popular Amiga computer. One thing that sets the CD32 apart from its computer cousin is its distinctive controller. Featuring an unconventional boomerang shape, this controller was not only ergonomically unique, but also ahead of its time and design. Instead of the standard A, B, and C buttons, it introduced a four-button layout with colored buttons, red, blue, green, and yellow, adding a vibrant and interactive dimension to gaming. The boomerang shape, coupled with its rewind and fast-forward shoulder buttons, brought a futuristic touch to gaming interaction. These innovative features made the CD32 controller not just a means to play, but a statement piece in the evolving landscape of gaming peripherals. Now, let's dive into the heart of gaming, the games. The CD32 not only brought popular titles of its time, but also introduced exclusives that weren't available on the Amiga. Classics like Microcosm, Prey and Alien Encounter, and Defender of the Crown 2, showcase the CD32's capabilities, delivering gaming experiences not available on its computer counterpart. However, it is worth noting that unlike some other gaming consoles of its time, the CD32 didn't have a defining system-selling title. While it offered a diverse library, there wasn't a single game that stood out as a must-have. Instead, it was a collection of unique and somewhat enjoyable games, each contributing its flavor to the CD32's gaming repertoire. Regardless, if you're a video game fanatic or a completist like myself, you have to add the Commodore Amiga CD32 to your LaunchBox library. Let's go! We have our fresh copy of LaunchBox. First thing I'm going to do is install RetroArch. I'm going to head up to Tools, Manage, RetroArch, Download and Install. This will go out and get the latest copy of RetroArch, configure it, and get it ready for us to import ROMs. RetroArch is now installed. Let's head up to import some ROMs. We're going to head up to Tools, Import, ROM Files. You are greeted with the Welcome to the Import ROMs from Files wizard. Let's click Next. Select the files to import. We're going to point to our Commodore Amiga CD32 game folder. Mine is stored on my desktop. I'm going to point to that. Before we click Next, Let's take a look at the games we're importing. I have three ROM files in my Commodore Amiga CD32 folder. I have Alien Breed, which is a CHD file. I have Beneath a Steel Sky, which is an ISO file. And I have Bubba and Sticks, which is a zip file. If I take a look at Bubba and Sticks, we have several files. We have a Q, an ISO, and some WAV files. The Commodore Amiga CD32 ROM files come in many different flavors. These are just some of the extensions we will encounter in the wild. Don't worry, LaunchBox has you covered. We'll have no problem emulating these extensions and others. Let's head back to LaunchBox. Let's click Next. LaunchBox automatically knows we're bringing in the Commodore Amiga CD32 because of our folder name. I'm going to click Next. We're going to choose RetroArch. And for the core, we're going to pick PUAE Libretto. Now there are two PUAE Libretto cores. PUAE 2021 is made for low-end devices like a Raspberry Pi. We want to pick the main one. Let's click Next. This is a personal choice. I'm going to pick Use the Files in their current location if you're keeping them on a NAS drive, or if you want them copied over to your LaunchBox directory, you can copy them there. But I'm going to use the files in their current directory. Let's have LaunchBox go out and grab the metadata. I'm going to check all since I have a big box build. I want it to look as 
pretty as possible. Click next. Same thing with Umu movies. Click next. I don't need the bezels. We'll leave this at its default. Next. You can see LaunchBox had no trouble bringing in the three files, even though they were different extensions. We have zip, ISO, CHD. Let's bring them in. We have three games imported successfully, as well as 32 media items. Now, before we can start playing, let's check Libretto Docs. It's always good practice to check the Libretto Docs for the core that you're installing. See if there's any prerequisites or any BIOS files you may need. This is a CD-based console, and 9 out of 10 times you are going to need a BIOS. So let's just take a scroll down and see what we need. There's all the different file types it will accept. This emulator does run Commodore Amiga as well, so we're going to get down to the CD32 files. These are the kickstart files you will need. I have those files on my desktop. I'm going to grab them and copy them over into my LaunchBox Emulators RetroArch System Directory. Let's head back to LaunchBox and play some games. I'm going to start a little bit out of order. I'm going to try Beneath the Steel Sky first. If you remember, this was the ISO. LaunchBox has no trouble. We are greeted with the Commodore CD32 BIOS screen. If we got to this point, you're good. Beneath the Steel Sky is a point-and-click adventure game in the vein of Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Maniac Mansion, Secret of Monkey Island. It's in my top three Commodore Amiga CD32 games. This game is great. You'll love it. I'm going to pick English. Use your mouse for this, by the way. Or you can use your joystick, but something about playing point-and-click with a point-and-click device. You're greeted to an intro screen. If you never played this game before, I recommend you watch this, but I'm going to fast forward, hitting my space bar. So the long and short of it is we're hiding from these guys so they don't find us. We have to find a way out. Then the adventure begins. As you can see, this is a talkie. There's a point and click adventure with voice acting. You don't have to read the dialogue. I think the first talkie adventure game was Day of the Tentacle, Maniac Mansion 2, back in 93. That's another great game. Actually, one of the main reasons why I got involved in LaunchBox was so I could play all my point-and-click adventure games under one roof. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Maniac Mansion, Sam and Max Hit the Road, Leisure Suit Larry, King's Quest, so many great games. Hours of fun solving puzzles. All great games. And this one's up there. It's retribution time. Gotta be clever. First thing is to get Joey running again. First things first, let's grab this bar. We're gonna right click on it. We're gonna move the mouse up to our menu, right click on the metal bar, point to the door, we're gonna pry this door open. Guard heard us. We're gonna hide out outside. Nowhere to go. He must have jumped. Fell all the way to ground level. Hiding behind the door. Phew. Lucky escape. Let's head back inside. Guard is leaving. Now the fun begins. Again, personally, this is top three Common Amiga CD32 games. It's a great game, great story. Check it out. Let's exit this and try another game. Let's try Alien Breed. Alien Breed was the CHD file. LaunchBox has no trouble loading it. We have our Amiga CD32 BIOS. We're ready to play. This game comes with two titles on one disc. It is 
Alien Breed Tower Assault and Alien Breed 2, both great games. It's a pretty cool intro. Again, if you haven't never played this game, watch it. We'll hit that space bar, fast forward. Gotta love the full motion video of the early 90s. Let's get right into it. You get set some options here. Alien Breed was released in 1994. It's a top-down shooter. A lot of fun. Has co-op play. A lot of puzzles you have to solve. All while you're fighting off hordes of aliens. This is a must-have for your Amiga CD32. Very common to see this on people's top 10 lists of the best Commodore Amiga CD32 games available. With a console that doesn't have many great games, this is certainly one of them. Pick it up. Next, last but very not least, Bubba and Sticks. Bubba and Sticks was the zip file. You see the progress bar decompressing. And there's our CD32 BIOS screen. We're good. This is another game with a great intro. Make sure you check it out. Let's skip it. There's the different levels you have to go through. We're starting on stage one. Now, this is a very fun game. Your Bubba and Sticks. Sticks is a stick. You could throw him. You could stick him in things. Standard platformer. You could throw the stick. Or you could just swing it and whack it. It's a fun game. You can play this one for a while too. Again, this is in the top 10 of the best Commodore Amiga CD32 games on most everyone's list. The Commodore Amiga CD32 may not be the Sony PlayStation, but it was the first 32-bit console. With Commodore's financial struggles and bankruptcy, really was destined to fail from the start. Due to bankruptcy and other lawsuits, it was never even released in the United States. Thousands of units sat in a warehouse in the Philippines until they were seized for non-payment. Who knows what could have been? With better financing and better third-party support, we all might be playing the latest incarnation of the Commodore Amiga CD32 right now. As always, questions, comments, drop them down below. This is RetroPython for LaunchBox. Until next time, happy gaming.